Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. What's going on, guys? Sorry I missed you guys last week. Had a couple things to take care of, but I am back this week. Uh, missed the minnow challenge as well. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't even told Zach that I was going to tie a minnow this week, but guess what? I lied. I'm not going to tie a minnow. Um, going to have to do what I want to do and uh, what inspires me, and I'm going to be tying this. If I can get it to focus, there it is. This is Jack Dennis's Amy Ant. Uh, pattern that's been around for quite a while but was kind of made notorious and a little more famous uh, back in 1999 for the Yellowstone Angler One Fly Contest where this fly won. Uh, after that, Umqua picked up the pattern and started tying it commercially. Um, I've only actually recently learned about the pattern myself but I've been tying a whole bunch of them from my box so today I'm going to tie one for you guys. So let's take her down to the vise and I will show you how it's done. All right, so we're gonna start this out on a uh, three times long, just dry or nymph hook that was provided to me by Chinook Wind Outfitters. Uh, and I'm gonna tie this with some gray UT or Danville 140. And we're just gonna start it. We're just gonna get a good coating down on this hook here. And we'll just cover it up as per normal down to roughly where the barb would be and then back up we just want to we're put some super glue and some foam on here so we just want to make sure there's something to bite into um, so I've taken I have two pieces of foam here uh, these were both cut out with the uh, what are they called river river road creations uh, foam cutters they were given to me by Zach so this is the number 10 and this is the brown is the dark brown is in eight um, so what we want to do is we kind of want to line up our tail just hanging off the back a little bit and then what we'll do is right where our thread here is we will get a couple get a couple biting wraps into that foam and then I like to just take it in front for a wrap or two. Helps kind of lock it in place temporarily. And then I'll just put it back over right where I had it. And then what we'll do is just some regular old super glue. Not a whole ton. Just a tiny bit here. And this is just because foam tends to slip around like crazy. So just a tiny bit on the top there. And what this does is this is going to help that foam stick in place on the top of the, the shank there. And so we kind of just line it up down the center and give it a pinch. And you're just going to wrap down this foam, and compress it all down. And that's really locking into place with that super glue we got on there. And then we'll just go back up just get her locked in and keep it all relatively uniform and then we'll take her back down once again it's going to be running right over that barb and now what we'll do is we'll take our dark brown or darker brown and we're going to cut a little bit of a v into the tail show you in a quick sec here something like that and what we're going to do is we're going to lay that on top just slightly extending past the, uh, the tan foam and we want to get that wrap to go perfectly across pinch it down couple again in front and bring it right back just to get it all locked down there we go. Uh, next step is we're going to add some Montana Fly Company speckled gray centipede legs. Sorry. 
So this is half right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this in half as well. And just give it a cut. So what I like to do is I like to grab a leg around the thread and just get it into place. Doesn't have to be pretty the first time. This rotary vice comes in super handy for being able to see what you're doing there. And you can kind of play with it, line it up. Oh, I did a really bad job of lining that up. So we're gonna take that out. Kind of ignoring the entire method I just said to do, but relatively even. Let's get a couple good wraps in it. And then we'll do the other half on the other side. And that's already relatively even that one. So you don't have to be, you don't have to worry about like really worry about placement of these because we're gonna put some other materials in there that's gonna help push them around and stuff. And uh, we can really pull them into place when we're kind of done. And now you wanna just pull everything back and get your thread out front. So now the next material we're gonna tie in is actually a, just a brown hackle feather. Uh, relatively short fibers because you don't wanna trim it if possible. So we will tie that in and bring it. You kind of have to pull all these back while you do this. You kind of want to tie it right back to the start of that foam. And then the next material is going to be some, I like this extra small pearl chenille brown. This was also provided by uh, Chinook. Wind Outfitters, of course. So then we'll just take some of that. Because it's so small, I don't really bother separating or cleaning off right down to the uh, rope. Pull that back. Keeping those legs out of the way. There we go. And so now we want to take this thread up here. We want to leave a decent, maybe one centimeter space for where the head's going to be. Or it's not the head, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a thorax, I guess. Hard to explain, I'll show you guys in a sec. So without trapping any legs here, we're just going to wrap the chenille forward. Nothing too exciting about this part, obviously. Just gives it a little bit of an under sparkle there in the belly. You can do it with dubbing too. I've, I did one with some UV brown dubbing, actually, where I just did like a pretty thick layer UV brown ice dub, of course, for the sparkle. So get that trapped in there. A couple wraps right in front again to lock her down. Get that trimmed out. And we will grab our hackle feather. I like to do this with pliers, it makes my life easier, or hackle pliers. Boink. And then we'll just take that guy and just wrap her forward. Grab it, lock it down. Cut the hackle feather out. Take that brown foam, pull it over top. Get it tied in there pretty decently. And then we're gonna come right up to where we had the brown foam or the tan foam tied in. We're gonna just lock all this down. You need to crunch it all down, pack it all down. Oops. And they're just like that. So the next material we're going to use is just some uh, pearl crystal flash from the lovely people over at Superfly. I like to grab maybe four of these because we're gonna double them up in the end. Let's 
get a couple wraps in there. And I like to wrap this down just a little bit because that way when you fold it over, you have something to wrap back onto to trap into place. So that gives you something like that. Kind of gives you, it's gonna be the underwing. We're gonna get some deer hair here in a second. I'm not too worried about the length. I'll take it off there just for manageability. This is just some natural deer hair we're gonna put in here next. Cut off a decent amount, like, I don't know, half a pencil width is what we're gonna measure it in, something like that. And as always, we just wanna clean all the crud out, of course. Sorry, I should be doing that on camera. We will put it in the old stacker. Couple good stacks. Out of the stacker it comes. Then we want to measure this kind of right to the back of that fly where that foam is. We want that wing to extend just past the foam. So now what I'm going to do that I have that measurement, I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to do it in my waste basket, but I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So now I got that cut off. What I'll do is I'll trap that like that. Again, I'll pull up and then we'll start going through the butts. Really get it all locked in there. Then we'll take the thread to the front. And here you just can take a dubbing of your choosing. I got this cool life cycle box. It's actually mostly, it's supposed to be for nymph dubbings, but it's got some super cool colors in it. I don't know if you guys can see all those. This was also given to me by Chinook. Uh, I like some of the lighter cream colors for this portion. So maybe kind of up here. So it's gonna grab one. We're just gonna dub on here. We just want to fill up this space here with some nice thick dubbing. A little bit more. Do that. And then we will take this foam Pull it over, get it locked down, don't snap your thread, very important part to fly tying, not snapping thread. At this point we can definitely take this and trim it out to, you know, a little bit longer than the wing is fine. Can definitely get this all in your hands and pull it tight together. At this point we can go the head. So the head, I'm gonna I'll flip this guys towards you. So what you can do is you just cut her off kind of straight and then give each of the corners a snip. It kind of gives you something like that. Next we will add another set of rubber legs. Again, I'm just taking a half here and um, cutting it in half again. Get her in there. There's that one. And then that one. Next step I would do is kind of just pull this longer brown foam or however long it is. And we're just gonna cut it at an upward V on the one side and we'll match it on the other side. Kind of gives it that little 
Little part over the wing there helps hold everything in place. Let's check those legs out, make sure they're where we like them. Yeah, they're looking pretty good there. Liking where these ones are. So since this is kind of like a pain in the butt to whip finish really well, I still do whip finish it, but I also like to just hit it with a, again, tiny bit of super glue. I just kind of just dabble a little bit on there, the thread. And then I got my last couple wraps in there and this, that super glue bites in and it's never gonna go anywhere, but I still like to hit it with the whip finisher. Just for a quick one or two, maybe three. And we cut her out. Now at this point, you can kind of play with those back legs and get them to spread out a little bit. They're actually not too bad already. You can even up the lengths, play with the lengths of the legs, go crazy, spend all day playing with that thing. But there she be. That is an Amy's Ant, tied by, originally by Jack Dennis, uh, is now sold by Umqua. And uh, I showed you guys how to tie it here. Super cool bug. And uh, I hope she catches me lots of trouts this year. So let's take her up top and sign out of this one. Hope you guys like that bug. Uh, I think it's super cool. I love that it's just like a combination of like a hopper, a Chernobyl ant, um, a stimulator. It's kind of everything all jammed in one. It's like, it's the best dry fly there could ever be if, if fish are keen in on big things. Obviously if it's, you know, BWO or Adam's time, you're not gonna be hucking that thing. But other than that, I think it's a super cool bug. Stoked to be stalking the old box with them and uh, very excited to get them out there when it warms up and see what they can do. Uh, hopefully you guys like that one as well. Get out there and uh, tie some and have you guys self a great weekend. See ya. Friday Night Flies would like to thank the following sponsors. Superfly, Solarez, Chinook Wind Outfitters, Dr. Slick, Griffin, Stonefoe.